We got Matt Hardy on the line. Matt, how are you doing today? Very good. How are you, Dave? I'm doing really good. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. All right, and, good to be here. Um, Matt, you know, I, want, I guess we should talk a little bit about. We had uh, Shan Moore on the show a couple weeks back, and uh, you know, we talked about his his breaking into wrestling, and um, your your breaking in was kind of unique because you guys, you and Jeff, are in in many ways you're, you're kind of self taught in your backyard, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, what, in our actuality, if, I, if you'd like me to go into it, I'd love to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I've done it a million times. Um, <laughs> you know, well, basically one Christmas uh, we got a trampoline. And uh, our dad had given us a trampoline for Christmas. Jeff and I, being big fans of the business, we uh, used to get on our trampoline and we'd kind of teach each other wrestling moves, whatever we saw on TV. We'd emulate it and just try and copy exactly what they do on TV. And then that led to us, uh, you know, going out in the woods. And we live out in the country here. We cut down uh, four trees and took some garden hose and put wire in it. And uh, we dug holes and built a little wrestling ring around the trampoline, you know, that uh, was probably 10 by 10, 12 by 12. <clears throat> and uh, we would go, you know, just study a match and almost write down move for move, and we would go out into the ring and then duplicate it. Then later, after we kind of, you know, taught ourselves to adjust and how to do all the moves, we would just go out there and wrestle each other and, you know, do our own little match and make it up as we went. Uh, you know, we even got to the point after we did that. I mean, we, this was like at ages, you know, 10 and 13 when we first did this. And we went on to the point where we would... Uh, Save up our money for a month or so. We'd run a video camera on the weekend, and Jeff and I would dress up as seven or eight different characters. We would wrestle each other. We would uh, have seven or eight different matches, have like a little what, what we called a pay per view. And uh, we would do that, and every couple months we would do that, and eventually, a couple years later, we were able to get a pay per view, and we filmed probably like 50 of the shows, you know, just like in our backyard, and that's more or less where we like taught ourselves, you know, the moves and, you know, wrestling to a degree. You know, from there we went. Uh, we met a guy who was doing local outlaw shows at county fairs, and this guy said, "Hey, I heard you guys wrestling in your backyard." And there's a couple of little boys. And actually, Shannon came over with Jeff. I mean, Shannon was probably, you know, the first time he ever came over was you know nine or ten years old because he was a buddy of Jeff. He lived still a couple miles from us. And uh, we had a couple other guys. This guy at the fair said, "Hey, I heard you and some some guys wrestling in your backyard. Would you like to come wrestle for me?" And this guy, you know, he didn't know anything about the business as far as that goes. He was just a, a carny. We said, "Yeah, sure, man. It'd be a blast." He had a ring that was like 20 by 20, and in the middle it had a uh, trampoline that was probably, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 by 12 or so. And on each side, he had uh, just sheets of plywood and steel that was like a concrete floor. You know, if you can envision what I'm saying, kind of had a rectangular trampoline in the middle. Mm -hmm. And we did that uh, at his fair show, and uh, it was it was unbelievable because it was the first time we ever wrestled in front of a crowd. And I remember that feeling was like like no other, you know. And Jeff and I, you know, we wrestled each other that night. Uh, it was the, just the best feeling ever because we wrestled forever just in front of our backyard, in front of trees, as I did. But uh, after doing that first show with that guy, he said, "Well, you know, this is pretty good, but I don't know if I'll make any money with the ring." So Jeff and I we ended up saving up some money. Now at this time, we were probably uh, 18. I was 18 or so. Jeff was about uh, 15, 17, 14. We ended up buying that ring from that guy. We made him payments on it, like $50 a month. We bought the ring from him and converted it back to a, a, a solid, regular ring, 16 by 16. <clears throat> and uh, we went from there and uh, started doing, like, our own shows. So we actually, you know, rent the armory, you know, down in a local town near us in Southern Pines. We got another town in Stanford. We did a few shows there, and we'd also do that county fair every year. And, uh... While we were doing one of our shows at a county fair, a guy who was a, a local independent wrestler, Eddie Rainwater, came to one of our shows, and we talked to him and met him. He was wrestling for the Italian side. I'm sure you remember him, right? Sure. Gary Stabon. Yeah. He said, well, you guys are pretty talented. He said, you just need to kind of learn the fundamentals of the business. I mean, we didn't know anything about you know, how that you, you work the left or anything about psychology. Or that. We were just, you know, guys who did moves, obviously. And uh, he said, well, come with me, and, you know, I'll introduce you to the Italian side, and, you know, he might do something for you guys. Introduced to uh, the Stallion. We started working with him occasionally. You know, he was uh, doing a couple shows every week in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia. We started, uh, you know, driving you know, a couple times a week doing shows for him. And eventually that led to us uh, going to a TV taping at, uh, you know, WWF. And uh, from there we worked with the Stallion a little bit. He was taking a huge booking fee. We'd make 150 a night for uh, three nights. Remember when they would do, you know, the, the three night taping? Uh, yeah. Once a month. We would make 150 a night, and he would take $100 as this percentage from our booking fee. And uh, mm -hmm. at this point, like myself, 
Jeff and Jason Art and Joy Ab. He was going, and also another guy, Marty Garner, Champagne. Does that name ring a bell at all? Oh, yeah, sure. And uh, us, us four guys were going. Eventually, we talked to Chief Jay Strongbow, and uh, he started booking us on our own, which we got to do a little more. We started doing a few dart matches here and there. And uh, a couple years later, they uh, did something to Jeff and I about they might have some ideas for us. And you know, eventually, we signed a developmental deal, and it led to here. That's kind of everything in a nutshell. When uh, Now, was there anyone, when, I remember when you first broke in, uh, in, the, in the WWF, they really, it was like you were kind of like there to, uh, it looked like you were there to, uh, on syndication. You kind of started at the bottom of the barrel in that um, it didn't seem like they, you weren't, you weren't brought in with this major push or anything like that. No, and, I, actually, you know, like I've always told people, I mean, whenever we signed that first developmental deal, which was in uh, April of 98, I mean, whenever we first came on TV, it was just like a continuance of, you know, the time-to-time jobs we've been doing. You know, I mean, we were just brought in still more or less, you know, we got a win over Kanta. You know, our first match, and the next night we got a win over too much, and then we lost like, you know, 50 times straight again. But, you know, that that was cool by us because we were making a regular paycheck. We just, you know, we had worked so hard to get to that level. That was cool. We were willing to do anything. We were going to we were gonna work really hard to prove ourselves. So, you know, from from there we just continued to work hard and hard and hard. And whenever people saw that, you know, wow, these guys can go out and have, you know, pretty good matches with most anybody on a, a regular basis, you know, eventually, you know, Vince and a couple of guys got behind us. They said, well, let's actually try and do a little something with them. Did you did you get a feeling at any one point that there was something? Because I I noticed like um, it was one of those gradual things where you see guys doing jobs on TV and you're kind of like and, and Cornette used to really on the syndicated shows when he did the commentary he would always like really push you know you you know you guys more than like the typical job guys and you know you kind of just and you'd throw in some really flashy moves and it was almost like you know uh, these guys actually are, are pretty good you know they're not just typical guys just running out there just getting slaughtered. And then, I mean, it was a real gradual thing because I can't even point to a thing. I mean, everyone knows the, the ladder match, but, you know, you'd already gotten a break, you know, in tag team titles a couple times and the, the thing with Michael Hayes and everything. And then I think that, you know, everyone started probably really catching on uh, with that ladder match, you yeah. know, and, which wasn't all that long ago. Right, well, that's definitely when we turned the corner. I mean, that was the point, you know, like you said, we, we've been tag team champions, but still, I mean, we almost didn't feel accepted. I mean, after we did the ladder match, you know, I think for myself, Jeff, Edge, and Christian, then we knew we had something to offer the, the company. You know, we, we knew we had something to contribute, and that's when we really all kind of turned the corner. That uh, was, um... You know, going back to Jim Cornette, too, he uh, was always a big supporter of ours. You know, even after, uh, you know, Chief J. Strongbow kind of helped us out just getting our foot in the door on our own just for doing TV, you know, Jim Cornette kind of picked up the ball and ran with us from there, and he was always saying, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm pushing for you guys to try and do this or do that, and I got some ideas, and, you know, Jim... You know how he was. He was kind of hit and miss with WWF. But, uh, you know, like, like I said, I, we really owe him a lot because he, he did uh, you know, put a lot of faith in us, and, and we appreciate that. Brian, um, I guess we're catching on because we have full phone lines, which is not, which actually is usually the case, but they are all women. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, Matt, how did the uh, WWF rings compare to the rings you used in your uh, backyard work? Well, uh, when we first went up to the WWF, uh, before the rings were changed, they were they were really bad. I mean, uh, they were uh, you know they were built for three hundred pound guys, three hundred fifty pound guys, and uh, for us two hundred twenty pounders, you know they didn't uh, they didn't uh, bump that much. Uh, now now they're good actually. The ring that we had in our backyard was it wasn't built very well. I mean, it, it bumped pretty good because it was was weak and you know wasn't a great ring to take around and travel with. But you know the WWF ring now is great. I mean, it bumps as good or you know, better than our backyard ring did. How do you two? How do you and Jeff both feel physically? Because um, you do a, a very high risk style. You're both pretty young, so you can recover quickly. I mean, you, have you thought about, you know, future like how long you want to be wrestling? Because like, well, I, I remember when 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 Chan Moore was on the show, it, it sort of stunned me because I think he's like 20 years old. Yeah. And when we were sort of talking to him about, uh, you know, wrestling, he goes, you know, you know, I'd, I'd like to do it for five more years, which is, um, I was just stunned because you know nobody that's 20 usually thinks of. Uh, you know, five more years. Right. But maybe, maybe that's the state of the, of the game. I don't know. Well, um, I don't know. Shannon and Jeff are a lot alike, though. Uh, you know, they're 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 best friends, and uh, you know, there's a, we've got a lot of our guys. You know, two even before. Well, let me go ahead and answer your question first. Physically, you know, I, I feel really good still now. You know, I don't do as much as Jeff does, obviously. And and Jeff, you know, the gimmick that we play now is almost how Jeff really is. I mean, Jeff doesn't think about what's going to happen next, or uh, you know, Jeff doesn't really think about the future. Jeff just full bore at that given time which bless his heart you know it's great and that's him but you know I still I 
think more too. Jeff almost does so many high spots. I'm almost trying to limit myself to doing other stuff in the match, you know, so that we have more of a complete match. Uh, so physically, I feel good, and Jeff physically is good. I think Jeff mentally's burned out a little bit. Uh, that, that's probably more. You know, I know there's such a you know on the internet there's such a big rumor that Jeff is hurt physically and in bad shape and falling down. And you know, physically he's not. I mean, he's probably tired from being on the road. You know, we've been on the road almost two years now. You know, mentally I think he's a little drained just because we're constantly doing something. Just like, you know, we just got home today and I'm still a little sick and I'm tired. And uh, we've got an appearance tomorrow. And we don't ever have, you know, four or five days off in a row. I mean, that's like non-existent for us now because we're like those guys in the middle that are still pretty popular. That, you know, if they drop a hat, they can stick us on an appearance and, you know, we'll do okay. So, I mean, our schedule's really, you know, our schedule's really, uh, uh, you know, asked a lot of us. And I think it, it burns Jeff out a little bit, and, you know, because he's younger. And myself, I have a little bit more of a love for the business, I think, than Jeff does. I mean, Jeff could probably say, you know, he might wrestle five or six years and retire if everything's good, but, you know, I can foresee myself, you know, wrestling for as long as I feel good and healthy and then even being in the business, you know, thereafter in some capacity. I want to mention a couple of quick news notes and, and also a, a, something clarifying something I said earlier. Um, email had press conference today for their pay-per-view, which is on August the 4th, only in Mexico. Uh -huh. uh, the Pierre Oth, Mascar, Anya Dos Mil versus Perro Guayo, Viano. Actually, it's a four-man match. It's going to be a cage match, which will be the first cage match ever at Arena Mexico. Uh, let's see. Uh, and it, as far as Ali and Joe Bugner, okay, I was so wrong. I mean, they did fight twice. Uh, they fought in 1973, a 12-round decision, which Ali won, and then they had a rematch in 1975, which Ali won on a 15-round decision. So he um, he beat him handily in both fights, but um, he never KO'd him. So anyway, I just want to clarify all that. And let's start with the phone, phone calls. It's Elizabeth and Tooney from California. You're up with Matt Hardy. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hi. Or sorry, Hi. Dave, we're not male callers. Oh, no, you don't. You know, that's, no, it's just it's kind of unique to this show. <laughs> well, uh, you'll have to excuse my shy compadre on the phone, but um, I just want to say that I had the chance to meet you at the Access in Anaheim, and you saved my day, year, my life. <laughs> so just thank you on being there. And, uh, well, my first question was, like, how do you feel about getting a well-deserved push? Like, uh, if you guys haven't had one in the past, do you ever feel like used or unappreciated or anything like that? Matt, did you hear that? No, actually, could you repeat it? I couldn't hear it at all. Oh, so this is How do you feel about you know getting a push? And 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 before you got the push, did you kind of feel like uh, unappreciated? Um, maybe. I mean, but not really. I mean, Jeff and I, we've never really had big egos. I mean, we've never the way we've been brought up. We've never had big egos. I mean, we're I'm happier being there, you know, and being able to make a, a good paycheck and being happy and you know what I'm doing is my occupation as far as wrestling and you know not sitting around and stalking because, you know, we don't have a big push. I mean, it's definitely nice, and uh, I hope we get more one in the future. I mean, I kind of really, when I look back in retrospect, I'm happy of how it's been such a gradual deal, how we started out, you know, as, as nothing, and, you know, we built up a little ways, and then, you know, we'll drop back down a little bit, and then we'll go up again and drop back down. That's kind of the way the WWF does things. You know, so, so everything's been great, and I have nothing to complain about right now. How does it feel as far as, like, um, in the last year or so, and, and maybe maybe longer, when you first started getting the, like, you know, you probably got some adulation on the independent scene, but it was, you know, limited. Sure. And then all of a sudden, your WWF stars, it's kind of, like, larger than life. I mean, you know, I mean, it's something that, like, realistically, not that many wrestlers in the past, only the top ones had to, you know, uh, uh, were, were, like, in that position. And now pretty much everyone with a, with a minor push into the WWF, is you know kind of almost is, almost, is, it, is it sometimes overwhelming you know because of the popularity of WWF at the present time? Yeah, absolutely. And I think sometimes, really, right now I, we can't digest it all. I think maybe later we can. I mean, really, when I stop back and think, I mean, really everything we ever wanted to accomplish in wrestling. Well, I've always said, you know, like when we first wrestled for WWF, just doing a job match. I said, well, if we never do anything else, you know, I fulfilled a dream and I wrestled in WWF. You know, so that was great. And then I said. When we got a contract, well, if I never do anything else, we got a contract. That's great. Then we won the World Tag Team Title. And uh, I said, well, you know, if we never did anything else, we, you know, won the World Tag Team Title. You know, we had a huge mess at, at WrestleMania. And, you know, if I had to quit wrestling right now, you know, I've fulfilled most everything we wanted to do. We've had shirts and action figures and posters, and it, it's great. And I think it is hard to take in. I mean, it's almost so overwhelming. I don't try and digest it all at one time. I mean, probably when I stop wrestling, I'll look back and retrospect and say, wow, you know, we had a lot of stuff going on. I just I just try to take it a day at a time right now, you know. 
Yeah, there was someone who said, um, when, did, when did you and, and Jeff start wrestling in the WWF, like just like the first times, like you, you know, when you were brought to a taping? In May, guess, in May of 94. Okay, because somebody said that uh, they have results dating back to 93. Oh, no, he has results of 93, but he started noticing your names in 94, so that would be right, along with Barry Hardy, right? Uh, yeah, well, we, we weren't associated with him in any way. Oh, okay, he was just one of the, okay, okay. Uh, I um, so that would be six years ago. So Jeff, so Jeff, Jeff would have been what seventeen? Is that Sixteen, right? actually. 16? When we, I'll, I'll tell you, this is a funny story too. When we first went up with the Italian today, and he just needed guys because you know he was getting a big booking fee anyway. So he would carry thirteen or fourteen guys, and you know, he would make a good little payday for three days. But uh, Jeff was only sixteen. He said, "Well, just give me a note from your dad, and it'll be okay." So then, whenever we got up there, Stan is he's a little on the shady side anyway. And uh, whenever we got up to uh, the WWF, we were filling out our releases. And he told Jeff, he said, well, just move your birthday back two years, you know, from 77, moving it back to 1975. So that was kind of funny. Jeff Russell was first ever match against Scott Hall at 16 years of age up in uh, uh, Ohio Spring, what, what's the, uh, Youngstown. Mm -hmm. Youngstown, Ohio, he wrestled Scott Hall. And it was only like his seventh match in a hard ring, technically, his seventh real match. And uh, it was like my eighth real match in a ring. I wrestled on live TV. And, uh, I was... Maybe I just turned 19. I was either 18 or 19 against Nikolai Volkov. So. Wow. Now, you guys have also been in a, in a lot of other places. You've been in Japan. and um, You've been in Japan, right, Matt? I know Jeff has. Actually, oh, Jeff was the only one who won his Will of the Wisp? Jeff won his Will of the Wisp, and we were getting we were getting ready to go right after we found our WWF deal the Hardy Boys, and uh, they, they put the X-Mail on that okay. right before we went. Okay. Let's go to Amy in Las Vegas. Amy, you're next up. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi, I have a, uh, more of an interesting question for Matt, actually, and it's not necessarily a question that relates to the, the in-the-ring wrestling as much as it relates uh -oh. to his website. And I know that there's been somewhat of a controversy surrounding how it ended, and I'm not really asking anybody to explain how it ended. I just wanted to know, Matt, if there was anything that you wanted to say to us fans, how do you feel? Okay, I can hear part of that. Could you also help me translate that? It was basically, um, and actually we had a lot of emails about this. It's just about, like, uh, your website. What's the situation with that? Well, actually, it, it, for some reason, uh, there was a girl who we met at the WrestleMania Rage Party before 15. Uh, her name was Katya, and she had been doing a website on us, and nobody was really following us at this time. And she said, hey, can I do your guys' official website? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And uh, there was another guy who lives in the area who used to follow some independent wrestling who she knew, and she kept emailing and writing letters and this, that, and the other thing. Well, give the Hardy Boys my phone number and give them my address. And I've got all this website. I want to see them, and I want them to give, us, to give me input. And uh, eventually we did, and we said, yeah, sure. I mean, we didn't have a lot of stuff going on this time, and we let her do it. And as time went on, you know, the website got bigger, and it became really popular. But for some reason, it seemed like, you know, there was always, trouble with, you know, as far as running the website, there was always, you know, just controversy and trouble. And like as time went on, apparently she said someone hacked into the website and, you know, I had people sending me emails that said, you know, this girl's doing this wrong or doing that. And I don't have any evidence of that, but uh, since she'd shut it down since it's been hacked, there's just been so much trouble and it's been such a big headache for me because, like, you know, I took care of that. Almost our roles, too, in wrestling. I mean, just wasn't the same lady that did Shannon Moore's website, was it? Know, as far as the business aspect. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, it's been such a headache for me trying to deal with that. You know, I just thought to go ahead and leave it down. And, you know, I'd like to, to, to have up a website, and I'm sure we will in, in, in time, you know, if they, people can just be patient. But, I mean, for now, there's just been so much controversy around that one website, and it's been kind of a headache. So uh, yeah, I, I didn't need to deal with it with everything else I've got going on. With growing up, growing up in the Carolinas, uh, you, were you a big wrestling fan, both big wrestling fans, obviously, as, as kids? And, and who did you... Uh, I mean, was there anyone that you patterned yourself after? Like, did Jeff did, or was Jeff a big fan of Shawn Michaels? Because that's, that's the one who a lot of people compare him to. Or yeah, we were uh, initially. Initially, our, our two big Jeff was a big fan of, of Sting and Ultimate Warrior. You know, he, when we wrestled on our little videos, he would paint his face and emulate those guys. And and you know, uh, we saw more NWA than we did WWF down here. You know, just being from this region, we would get to go out to some of those shows and everything. I was a big, ironically enough, fabulous Freebird fan. I loved Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin in the NWA NWA days. And, uh, you know, that was ironic that later we would end up, you know, with Michael Hayes. And, you know, I have to say something for Michael Hayes, too, now. He's still one of the, the you know, biggest driving forces behind us. He still does a lot to help Jeff and I, and I really appreciate him. Uh, Michael Hayes, you know, been there for us 
ever since we uh, got to know that guy, and he still helps us to this day. But, uh, you know, Macho Man, I was a big Randy Savage fan, too. As time went on and we started understanding wrestling and what it was about more, you know, obviously we were both attracted towards Shawn Michaels. You know, I think all of the stuff there now, you know, uh, you know, from Edge and Christian and, you know, Jericho, all of us, you know, kind of had that attraction towards Shawn Michaels. And I think he set the standard for, you know, how wrestling would be for the next few years because he had such the ultimate pack to everything. Besides being such a, a great, entertaining, entertaining wrestler, he had such personality and such charisma. I mean, he was the, the whole package there. And he was, a, you know, a smaller guy. He wasn't, you know, six foot eight and your standard 350 pound wrestler that was WWF promoted for all these years. What was your feeling as far as, or did you even think about it, because you know, uh, you know, mentioning that, the WWF for, for forever was noted, it was almost one of those things where if you're a small guy, it's really not the place to go because you won't get a break, and, and you know, Shawn Michaels being the exception, but he was the exception, mm -hmm. and then here you guys were, you know, small guys, and you're in the WWF, was it just, was it just one of those things where, or did you just see that the barrier was breaking down, you know, and, and, it, and it was the ability that was counting more than size? Yeah, I think we did, and plus, you know, that was really the only open door we had at the time. I mean, there were times when we were doing some, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, whenever we were doing TVs at WWF, I mean, I, I would give tapes to people at, you know, WCW, and actually, we uh, spoke with uh, a few people at ECW right before we signed with WWF as well. But, you know, WWF was just, you know, all it was always there, and we could always get a little work here and there, and it seemed like, you know, there might be a little light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, really... I, I didn't even try to think of things like that. I just believe, you know, if you worked hard enough and you gave all you got, uh, you know, eventually you could you could overcome whatever odds there would be. You know, I, you know, kind of had that uh, that blind faith. This is from someone who, who emails us in and goes, "What was what's, the, what's your favorite wrestling match that you've ever seen?" That I've ever seen personally. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I would have to say that definitely at the time. I mean, the first ladder match we ever saw. You know, I, I was a huge fan of that. Was that Michaels and, and Razor Michael, Ramon? Michaels and Ramon, the first one from WrestleMania. You know, that yeah. went down. It's, it's my favorite ladder match forever. Yeah. And uh, wow. yeah, I was just going to say, too, I'm sure, you know, even, you know, Edge and Christian, you know, going back to those, the, you know, it's kind of myself, Jeff, Edge and Christian, we've kind of, you know, came along at the same time. We're all we're really close, you know, and we, we love working with each other, obviously, you know, and it was great that, you know, we were all four fans of that match. You know, it was our idea, that Terry Invitational Tournament was actually our idea, and the ladder match was something we pitched, and, that made it even more special when it was something that, you know, we came up with. You know, and it was kind of the thing that helped get us all over the edge. So was that, that best of, was that like from watching like a Nikita Koloff and Magnum TA, or was it, or did that have nothing to do with it, like kind of best of series? Uh, no, not really. You know, we just knew that we could go out and, you know, do, do five matches. Actually, we wanted to do seven initially, you know, because we knew we could go out and, you know, do seven matches that were completely different and still be entertaining. Uh, you know, I guess with that, the being the best three out of five wasn't, you know, uh, spawned off from anything else. I mean, it was just we were wanting to, you know, try and work with something and, you know, give people a little bit of drama, some, you know, something to follow that we were involved in. You know, we were just really happy that, you know, sometimes it's hard to, hard to get, you know, things to go that way, you know, if, if you want to do something special and if you have an idea, and luckily we got to do that. Let's, let's start hitting some phone calls. Let's go to Kalen in New Jersey. Kalen, you're here with Matt Hardy. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Um, uh, go, go ahead. Could you hear me? We, we hear you perfectly. Matt, okay. Matt, can you hear her? I can hear her a little bit. Yeah, she can, he can hear you. Oh, uh, I can't hear him at all. Um, turn your speaker like, down, though. Turn my speaker, speaker down? Okay, yeah, turn your speaker down. Okay. Um, sorry, my dog, I have puppies that are playing in the background. But, um... I was going to ask Matt how he liked his current angle with Lita. And what was the question about Lita? How do you like working with Lita? Uh, it's, it's good. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, you know, once again, she's someone else who trained a little bit, and she kind of came along and used to work out with us here in the, the Omega group, so to say. And, uh, you know, with Lita out there, it kind of gives us, uh, you know, something else to play with outside the ring. You know, I, I love to kind of sit back and think of different combinations of stuff we can do with you know, a girl here and there, and Lita, that she's got, she's still real limited, and she, she's learned a lot, but there's a, a lot that she can do, you know, a, a lot more than, you know, most females in wrestling, which uh, gives us a lot to, to toy with and play with and, you know, come up with some real interesting combinations to, to uh, make the crowd excited. What do, what do you think of the fact, I mean, I, my impression just from watching TV Monday and, and, and the pay-per-view, and then just seeing the results from last night, 
I get the impression that she's in a real good role right now, that they're real high on her. Yeah, they, they are. They're very high on her. Um, you know, besides just, you know, one of the things, too, they're, they're real high on attitude now, and she's also got a really good attitude. You know, she's, she's once again, she's real talented. Like I said, she's still learning a lot, and uh, she, she, she's she got the, the ability and the capacity to learn, and she wants to learn, which is real good. And uh, she's, she's got an open attitude where she'll do whatever, and, and I think they definitely have big plans for her. You know, she's kind of like the... Uh, as I said, Shawn Michaels set the set the role for how women, you know, how men will be in America for the next few years. I think she's kind of doing that for how women will be in America for the next few years. Did did she or you guys ever watch um, Japanese tapes or Mexican tapes to come up with stuff? Um, like I know, like because because for women wrestling, there's really not a lot of role models, I guess, among wrestlers in the United States. But whereas in, was like the Japanese had some phenomenal workers in the you know, and even today they right. have some phenomenal workers. I've actually, I don't think she's seen a lot. I think it would be good for her. I've told her that several times. It would be good for her to sit down and watch some stuff. Actually, I'd like to try and get her some stuff. Um, I watch some stuff here and there. You know, I, I try and, most anything I can get my hands on, I try and watch because I try and, you know, learn all I can. But I think that would definitely be good for her because she's, she's still, athletically, she's really amazing and she's, she's tough. She's probably tough to become and she's, she's, uh, she's got a lot of potential. I just hope, you know, I hope she can, uh, you know, fulfill all that potential that she has. And uh, once again, I think they're going to give the opportunity to because they, they really like her. What's what's your thoughts as far as the the camps that you attended with Dory Funk Jr. with? And I guess Edge and Christian did as well. All you guys, I guess, you know, did, did that stuff before. Um, I mean, I guess you were in the WWF and you'd all signed, and and they kind of like sent you there for some polish and everything. Right. Well, it was actually good just because uh, you know with the stuff Jeff and I kind of learned our own, even the stuff we went with Stallion. I mean, we even went back to you know the very basics, and even though. We, we knew how to do them at that point, you know, still we, we tighten them up and we polish them. And it's funny now because the way wrestling is on TV, you, you never use any of that. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's never any time to do that. You know, it would be great to be able to go out and, you know, have a, you know, a 30-minute match and, and take your time. And, you know, the, the crowd really wouldn't, you know, buy into it as much now. But I, I still think there's, there's a lot of stuff uh, left to be done. And I'm sure that will come back around in time. You know, with the way TV is now, we go out there and we have, you know, five minutes from beginning to end and, you know, you go out there and you jam in, you know, whatever you're going to do in the match, and it's more or less going around the angle now. Uh, let's go to uh, Amy in New Jersey. Amy, you're next up. Hi. Hey, how, how are, are you? you? I'm doing good. Um, I wanted, this is kind of a weird question, but I wanted to ask Matt if his relationship with Jeff has changed at all since being in the WWF. Did you hear that, Matt? No, I couldn't hear all. Oh, okay. It was. Uh, has your relationship with Jeff changed at all since you've been in the WWF? Um, uh, maybe it has a little bit because now <clears throat> Jeff and I are still real close, but now there's a big difference. Like Jeff has moved into his own place now. Like he's kind of got, you know, he, Jeff got a lot of responsibility on his own. I know whenever we would come, whenever we were at home before, we were like together all the time. But now it's almost to the point where, like, when we're on the road, we're together for five or six days straight, and then, like, when we come home for the two two days or whatever, you know, I, I never see him. Which it has changed a little bit. I don't know. You know, I guess we're together so much now. He needs, some, you know, some time to himself or whatever. I think he needs time to himself to kind of, you know, re refresh himself because really he gets sometimes he gets aggravated from doing so much because just just a really unique person. And uh, it, it just—I think everyone should should meet Jeff because I mean, there's nobody else like him in the world. I mean, you can tell his wrestling style is different, but even his personality is is, is really different from, from anyone else you ever meet. You know, Jeff needs time alone and everything. But it, it, it has changed a little bit, I think, where uh, you know we're we're not together, you know, all the time. I can tell there's, you know, he, he wants a little bit of separation just because he's always in, in such a public eye now. You know, wherever we go, places, you know, people recognize us and. He never has any time alone, and I think Jeff's one of those people who just needs to, you know, isolate himself for a little while and be by himself and kind of, you know, sort out his thoughts and whatnot and get himself together. If that makes any sense. Have you guys ever, I mean, I guess it's like almost an inevitability that uh, the, t the day will come when you uh, split up the team. I mean, is it is there any time soon, or is it something that you just kind of know is going to happen at some point? Um, I don't think it'll be any time soon. Um it's uh i'm sure i'm sure down the road of what happened sometime i mean there's never funny there's been several rumors of it i mean there, there's never been anything ever said to us about it you know because I, I don't think they've really really thought about that i mean I, there's still so much left for us as a tag team to do, to do i mean i don't think we've ever had you know we, we've never really developed our personalities and you know i know there's a lot of people too that say well you know the hardies don't really have personality or don't have this and that 
And <clears throat> actually, we do. I don't know. Did you get to see, uh, Dave, I'll ask this of you. Did you see the uh, Sunday Night Heat where we did an interview uh, a couple weeks ago where I asked to build off some stuff and then Lee just said a couple things and then we kind of left and, and Jeff said, uh, what up, coach? No, I didn't see that. But I, I don't know if you saw it or not, but that, that really was like us, and that's, that's kind of how it is because, like, I'm on top of everything, and, and I'm the one that's kind of, like, decided a game plan, and then Jeff is just kind of is just there in his own little world. You know, but I, I think we've still got that. We've got to develop a personality as, as a tag team, and then I would love to have a little, you know, a, a tag team title reign where, you know, we were really the tag team at that time. You know, I think we still got that left to do as a tag team. But, uh, you know, eventually they'll come, and, you know, I'll, that'll be fine. I, you know, we both accept that, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cool to do whatever. You know, Obviously, uh, you've done, like, I, I feel mostly... comfortable in, in, in whatever they, uh, you know, they'll ask us to do. Brian, go ahead. I was just going to say, obviously, you've done, you know, mostly tag work, but you've done some singles matches as well. And uh, from what you've done, do you like doing tag work better, or do you not even care, or do you like singles work? Yeah, no, actually, I mean, I like tag team work better, just because there's, there's more combinations, there's more original stuff you can do. There's, uh, you know, in, in the wrestling world we see now with so much programming, you know, re- wrestling's so watered down. You know, you see so much of it on TV anyway. It's hard to come out and do original stuff that the crowd goes, wow, I've never seen that before. You know, it's still, whenever you do tag team matches, there's still a lot of combination <clears throat> of stuff to do. You know, actually, whenever we had our six man on pay per view this Sunday, I still got like a ton of more ideas if we had, you know, if we could do it. You know, I don't know if it would be with Trish and TNA. If, we had, you know, another tag team and another female that, you know, Jeff and I and Lita could do. So uh, I've got, a, you know, a whole lot of more ideas that, you know, I would love to see done in one of those matches that would be really cool. Now, how, how open are they to uh, ideas, like, when you guys are putting together a match? Like, I mean, you've talked a lot about how you have a ton of ideas and, you know, you came up with the concept of the ladder match and everything like that. I mean, are they pretty are they pretty okay with it when you uh, want to put a match together or do they kind of, you know, sometimes for, like, pay-per-view matches want to do a lot of it for you? Um, you, you mean... Uh, as far as, like, the booking committee. Excuse me? The, like Pat Patterson and... Yeah, how open are they to you? Like, if you have suggestions, they're pretty open for your suggestions? Yeah, actually, I mean, we've kind of established ourselves <clears throat> to the point where they're, they're, they're very open to our suggestions. You know, I, I, I think there might come times where, <clears throat> you know, like, if, if they would give us certain matches, they, they might want to, you know, eventually tone down stuff we do, you know, here and there. But they're, they're, they're very open to our suggestions. Actually, you know, it's it changed a lot. I think, oh, I think we've just kind of proven ourselves, especially in, you know, like in, in you know, ladder matches and, and table matches and stuff like that. You know, we've been able to go out and do different matches, and, you know, they haven't been, you know, disasters. You know, they've been pretty good, so I think we've kind of proven ourselves. What was your, what was your thoughts, and what was the thoughts of the people in the company when Jeff did that one spot where he jumped off that, that really high ladder through the table? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, people, they weren't really surprised that he did that. <laughs> Uh, you know, just just knowing him, but it was it was actually one of those things where you know I we'd ask Jeff that you know it was uh, I don't know what a, a fourteen foot ladder whatever you're talking about WrestleMania obviously right um, you know I, I told Jeff too I said you know well you know it'd probably be better not to be on the top rung just because it'd be a little safer to be down one and you'd probably get the same effect of it you know just you know the ladder would be a little more stable but you know I knew automatically tell him that he was going to come off the top and uh, I don't know Jeff. Uh, you know, he's, he's been lucky so far as far as, you know, doing things like that. And, you know, everybody just kind of ex- expects that of him. I mean, he's just, he definitely, the characters that we play now as far as being, you know, extreme and fearless and reckless, you know, I mean, that, that's like really Jeff. You know, I, I'm kind of, I'm not as fearless and as reckless, you know, as recklessness, uh, my recklessness is not as quite, quite as uh, extreme as Jeff is, but, uh, you know, it was almost expected of him. I mean, you know, people uh, people have told him, I'll, I'll take it back to some people in the company have told him to slow down, you know, and not do as much stuff here and there. But, you know, with that being WrestleMania, I think, you know, it was one of those scenarios where kind of anything goes. And, you know, I, we were going to let it all hang out for our first WrestleMania anyway. Now, has there yeah. ever been, like, a spot that uh, you came up with and they basically said, no, let's not do that one? That's too dangerous. You said, has there ever been a spot that we came up with and they said no? Yeah, where the, where the management just goes, no, 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 we'd, we'd rather you didn't do that one. Yeah, yeah, there has been a few times. Anything, like, in particular? Or? Um, I don't uh, Actually, we, we had one, one time we were going to do something in in the, in the uh, in a WrestleMania ladder match with a handcuffs bumping off the ladder, and, and they didn't want us to do that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's one. Th- there's, there's been a few other times here and there, just, just different bumps, and probably because the importance of the match wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't relevant enough to do that bump in. But you know, I mean, they, they've just said, you know, well, I'd rather, you know, rather not have you do that there. I think we should save that, or you know, whatever. Mm. What were your thoughts as far as um, as far as like, you know, like in, in wrestling in the last two years, I guess, really. The, in, in many ways, the bar has been raised so much that, like, I mean, like in, in the moves that were in 1996 considered spectacular are now almost commonplace to the point that um, sometimes I almost wonder if they're worth the injury risk. You know, like like some of the more spectacular dives that people, have, you know, don't even really react to like they did a couple of years ago. And now, you know, after like I guess the Mick Foley match at Hell in the Cell, I mean, it's a whole new. It's a whole new level for those things. Does it kind of scare you at times? Even though I know your 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 stuff is kind of under control compared to Jeff. Sure. But uh, right. you know. Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It does. I mean. Jeff, actually, Jeff. Jeff scares me. You know. Part of the time, as far as that goes, because I, you know, I tell Jeff. You know, I I, I really want Jeff to think about, you know, five years from now. I don't want him to think about how he's gonna, you know, you know, feel in you know the next two weeks. You know, although he's fine right now. You know. I mean. I, I think especially you know on, on TV week to week. You know, there's such a, you know, there's so much emphasis on, you know, Raw has to be, you know, Raw has to be awesome, you know, going against Nitro. And, you know, everybody kind of wants to raise the bar and, you know, try this and try that. I mean, you've got to go out and continually put out a good product, I think. But, you know, if you are going to take, you know, a big chance, it should be, you know, you should save it for the right occasion. You know, like I know we've got SummerSlam coming up. You know, we're going to be in Raleigh, and I'm hoping, you know, we're in some kind of, you know, good feature match there. I mean, that 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 would be an opportunity where, you know, it would be worth taking a chance, I think. No, no. Do you, do you have any idea who your opponents are going to be in Raleigh? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Actually, what? I certainly don't. Uh, you know, I, I can say though, I would, you know, I'm, I would love for it to be Edge and Christian. You know, the tag team title. You know, the Dudleys. Also, have to put a plug in for those guys. We definitely enjoy working with those guys. Uh, uh, let's go to let's go to Tim in Virginia. Tim, what's going on? Hey, Dave. Love the show. Thank you very much. Hey, Brian. Hey. Hey, Serge, Matt. How's it going? Hey, man, what's going on? Is this Not too much. A few questions. Uh, I know you probably don't get as much of a chance to watch tapes anymore, but is there anyone outside the WWF that you would like for the Hardy Boys to wrestle right now? Outside of the WWF? Um, just, you know, just we know Shannon Shane, so I'd love to wrestle three count one time. Uh, that'd be fun. That'd be fun for us, I'm sure. Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh... Uh, it's kind of a tough question, really. It's something I hadn't, hadn't even thought about. You know, I don't know. I mean, we're we're pretty happy with it, where we are. I'm trying to think of, you know, tag teams in WCW. You know, first off, Ray, you know, Ray Mysterio we, and Hooker Guerrero, maybe. Uh, yeah, that you know, that'd be fun. Those guys, you know, three count. Uh, you know, those are probably the, the the top two I can think of. You know, being selfish off the top of my head. Um. Not, not really. I mean, there's nobody's out there that we'd be dying to wrestle right now. Have you ever seen tapes of Dragon Kid? Uh, no, I haven't. I, actually, I haven't. I've, uh, I've heard about him. Yeah, he's he's um as far as like moves, he's got some really mind blowing moves. Right. You know, it's, it still needs more experience, but um, I mean, he does this uh, full. Fl- you know, his his Dragon Rana is like that's one of the more spectacular moves in wrestling. Right. You know, it's like a, it's like he does a full flip like you're doing a 450. Uh, but not landing, and then landing on the guy's shoulders, like, and then Hurricane Rana back in the other direction. It's sure. quite amazing to see. Definitely, that, that's uh, that's uh, definitely amazing. It's amazing to pull off. It takes two guys to do that, I'm sure. Yeah, Tim. Anything else? Did you guys ever wrestle Dave Cash down in North Carolina? Uh, I know he was in NCW uh, with did, you guys, we, but we I didn't remember if you ever wrestled him or not. <clears throat> we used to wrestle in a little promotion called uh, NCW out in, out in the mountains in North Carolina, and down in Georgia. We worked with him out there. When he was still doing that, uh, Dave Jericho. Because he's really been putting on some great shows with ECW. Hey, excuse me? Dave yeah, Cash just... has really been impressive in ECW. I couldn't remember I, if you had I, ever wrestled him or not. I, I don't, I rarely get to see any uh, ECW now. The, the things I've read about him, you know, I've heard that he's been doing some good stuff. He's doing really well. Good. Yeah. Were there ever any thoughts of either you or Jeff being in the like the Super Astros division when that was going, like when Jeff was doing Willow the West? I know he never did that in WWF. Um, we uh, we were on one of the Super Astro shows. We actually worked. Uh, who, did, who did we work there? Uh, Jesus and Papa Chulo. Uh huh. When it was on, uh, no, I, they never really talked talked to us about being on there. You know, I think they kind of 
you know, we came into WWF and just, you know, we started slow, and I, I think they eventually wanted to kind of, you know, mold us into something. They, any way they had, they hoped that we would work out, and, you know, and we'd, we'd become a decent little tag team in WWF. You know, I think that was kind of always the plan, and, and luckily that kind of that kind of happened. Anything else, Jim? Yeah, I was just wondering if he has any idea when their website's going to be back up. Um, no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm sure they'll, you know, uh, eventually we'll have some sort of website up some capacity. I'm not sure on the day, though. The dreaded website question. <laughs> right. Okay, well, thanks a lot. All right, man. All right. Okay, this is from someone who goes, um, yeah, well, okay, um, he goes, are, are you a fan of uh, Lucha Libre, and did you ever, did you or Jeff ever think of wrestling in Mexico before you signed in the WWF? Uh, yeah, I can enjoy some of the stuff. I mean, I like the, you know, I like stuff with psychology a lot better. You know, even though our stuff is still a, a lot more spice stuff, I mean, I, I, you know, I kind of like, I try and do stuff that has, you know, that makes that makes sense, that has some psychology behind it, but it's still a little spicier than than the other guys, just because we're smaller anyway. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of just, you know, doing, you know, move after move after move after move, although, you know, occasionally we're we're guilty of that. You know, I like to try and put I like to try and put a little bit of a little bit of fighting and, and realism and psychology in the matches. Here is today's question. Who was the first ever so get get ready to get ready to log on. Who was the first ever World Wrestling Federation European champion? So anyway, uh you can log on. We'll have we'll have our two winners momentarily, I think. Exactly. Sometimes when I think sometimes when I think that I'm so wrong. But I really think we will this time. Anyway, we're back with Matt Hardy, uh, and we've got a full bank of phone calls, and we're going to go to Long Island, Helena and Dan, Helena and Daniela. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Um, How are you doing? I was. We're like twelve, and we like really idolize the Hardy Boys, and we wanted to know what they think about younger children who idolize them. Well, that must be that must be a heavy thing to think about. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I actually have that question. Um. Well, uh. I like I, I like for children to idolize, and especially not necessarily for the characters we portray on TV, or the people that Matt and Jeff Hardy really are. You know, because we're we're both you know I think we're both really good people, and our you know our whole story of how we got from you know being kids with no, having God. dreams of being wrestlers to becoming wrestlers, I think it's pretty inspirational. It's almost like a you know a, a fairy tale. Don't pick up because I'm getting here uh, I love you know to take time out and get a chance to you know talk with younger kids or, you know, younger people trying to get rest and whatever and, you know, trying to give them a little inspiration or, you know, the you know the old feeling there's some light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I love being put in the position of kind of being a, a role model or, you know, inspiration. And I don't feel bad about it at all. I mean, that's one of the, uh, you know, that's one of the, uh, you know, gonna, the benefiting factors, I think, that kind of come with my job, that I can do that and kind of give back a little bit. You know, especially I've been, a lot of people help me out, and uh, a lot of people inspired me and helped me, and uh, I really appreciate it. anything I can do to give that back. You know, I will. Do you, do you ever um, have any, you any any qualms as far as storyline goes? You know, again, like um, you know, with kids watching the show, and I mean, not so much lately, but uh, certainly like a year ago. I mean, the storylines were, were at least borderline, if not over the border in some case, in some cases. Right. Yeah, actually, many cases, maybe. I mean, do you ever have any uh, qualms about? About like that, it's kind of like a weird dichotomy there because you know obviously WWE wrestling is is the biggest thing, you know, with uh, with young kids, and at the same time, you know, it was um, very adult oriented entertainment in, in 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 some aspects of it. Right, I, I just you know so many people accept wrestling as, as entertainment now. I just wish that everybody could you know you know make the role models not the characters but the people that play them. You know, just like in in soap operas, you know, don't uh, you know the Necessarily, the, the the lady who cheats with, you know, every wise husband, you know, on the show might be a really good person, you know, when you hear an interview with her, you know, off the show, and you know, you could look up to her, and you know, that she could be your role model. You know, I just wish people would look at wrestling more like that, you know. But you know, so many people still look at, you know, the character you're portraying, like, oh, well, they're cool. I want to be like them. I mean, is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We we have a a couple of questions along these same lines, so. Um... What, what's the situation? There, there, there's no um, r rumors of you or your brother dating Lita. That's that's not correct. That's just, no, that's that's just that's someone that's who you've known. I mean, we're we're good friends, and especially uh, you know her and I. I met her first, and uh, you know we're we're even closer friends than, than uh, her and Jeff are. But we're just all good friends, and you know, neither one of us dated her. You know that that rumor's been her and I've been uh, dating have been floating around forever. 
you know, it, wh what, what do you think as far as like you know you had you had a gr I guess a group of friends. I mean, what Shane Helm, Shane Helm, Shannon Moore, mm -hmm. and you and Jeff and and Lita, and you kind of all grew up together in your backyard, I guess. And yeah, well, pretty much you. I was just gonna say it almost it expands a little more than that too. I mean, there's uh, <clears throat> you know, initially like we had a group like the little federation we started running. Eventually, it became Omega, and those tapes are still they're pretty famous now. They uh, they trade quite a bit like on the internet. Uh, it was the organization of modern extreme grappling art. You know, and in that federation, it was myself, Jeff, uh, Joy Abs, Jason Art, right. Shane Helms, who's still one of my best friends, uh, Shannon Moore, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Jeff, uh, the Dubs, you know, Mike, uh, you know, Mike uh, Maverick, or Mike Howe, and Murray Happer, who played the Dubs in ECW, who are with the WWF now. You know, both those guys wrestled there. Steve Carino wrestled with a thumb. Uh, you know, like I said, Lita came in, and she, she trained with the whole group, too, and also, Joy Matthews and Christian York, I'm sure you're familiar with those two names. Mm -hmm. uh, all, all those guys wrestled with us, and, you know, that was, we really had some good shows, you know, as Omega with, with those guys, and everybody's really went on to, uh, to do a good thing. And, you know, it's, it's amazing because the percentage of people who start in wrestling that make it is actually very small, yet, you know, you come from a group where, you know, a very high percentage have made it, and you're all. You know, there's a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of good in the future of, of a lot of you guys. I mean, depending on where you are and, and a couple of lucky breaks and things like that. But um, you know, you, you know, so many of you have really made it. Yeah, I, I, it's awesome, man. Like I said, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, I, I, I really feel fortunate <clears throat> because I look at our lives uh, like a fairy tale almost. You know, I couldn't have uh, planned it out any better. You know, it's just been really good. And it's, you know, it's been a great ride, and I love it. And I hope I, you know, I, I plan on continue, you know, to continue to love it as time goes on. Do you, is, there, is there any reason that you come up with as far as like so many, you know, such high percentages, just the fact that, um, is, is it the area you were from or just that you tr you guys just were in your backyard uh, training just so much that, you know, it accelerated your progress, like, you know, at a younger age quicker than people who didn't have a ring in their backyard, I guess? Yeah, well, I, I think a lot of it was just that, uh, you know, we had so many people that really, uh, you know, that were so dedicated and that, that were just like, uh, you know, hell-bent or making it one way or the other. I mean, uh you know, there were so many, you know, positive attitudes, which, you know, Shane Helms, uh, you know, he, he thinks a lot like I do as far as that goes, as far as, uh, you know, as uh, the way the wrestling business works and whatnot. And, uh, you know, just kind of when we all got together, we all kind of, you know, fed off each other. And, you know, we all, you know, wanted to, you know, to make it more. And whenever one of us would get a break, we kind of open the door for everybody else. And, you know, if somebody else would get a break, we'd do whatever we could to help them. You know, as far as that goes, it was really a, a nice, you know, mutual admiration society. And uh, after Jeff and I got jobs, you know, I, I actually uh, uh, got Joy Abs, you know, uh, helped get him looked at and got a job, and also the Dubs as well. Uh, you know, uh, Shannon and Shane, too. I was uh, <clears throat> I was actually uh, trying to, to get something going on for those guys. They're actually a little smaller, and, uh, you know, our cruiserweight division is not, you know, they're not hiring people right and left for that as far as that goes. But they were able to, you know, get a breakdown in WCW, so those guys ended up there, which, you know, bless their heart, good for them. Let's go to uh, Mike in Florida. Mike, you're next up. Hey, hey, Matt Hardy. How you doing, brother? Hey, man. Hey, I think you and Jeff are the two best high flyers in all of wrestling today. All right. Thanks, dude. And I got another question to ask you, Matt. When you and your brother do those stunts, are you afraid of falling the wrong way and, like, you know, ending your career? Uh, not really while we're doing them. I mean, while we're out there, uh... And you know, we just try and you know we you know we try not to think about it. I mean we we did the I kind of do the thinking about it before we go out there and do it. And I, I hope I've got my plan together in my head. I mean while we're out there and we're in the middle of the stuff, we just kind of go and you know, let it all hang out. So uh, we really don't think about it there. You know there's there's times where I sit back and you know uh, I think well you know I, I need to be careful and maybe I should try this later because it could be dangerous. And, you know. Hey I, Dave, is something wrong with your mic? Because I can't really hear him that good. No, no, everything's everything should be all right. All right. Okay. Hey, uh, Dave. You know, you yes. know, man. We uh, we we think about well, the. Let, let, let me finish. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Finish. I was just gonna say, you know, I mean, we, you know, we we, you know, realize there's some danger there, but you know, while while we're doing it, we, you know, we we try to take all the precautions we can and you know be as safe as possible, which you know might might not be, you know. <laughs> well, I wish you and your brother continued success. Okay, thank you, man. Okay, thanks very much. Let's go to is it Dave in California? Yeah, hey Matt. What's up, Dave? Um, I know your brothers wrestled over in Japan before. I was wondering if you've ever thought about going over there. Yeah, maybe actually, wrestling Ken cool. the Box sometime. You'd have a great match. Yeah, actually, we were both going to go, like as a, as a tag team, right uh, before we started with WWF, and 
we weren't able to go. And uh, I was really looking forward to it. I'd love to have went, and, you know, it'd probably be something I would love to do at least one time, you know, to stay up on it. Do you have any goal, or, or is, do you have any goals as far as like in the World Wrestling Federation of working a program with I don't know if you're just throwing out a name like a Chris Benoit or, oh, man, or someone yeah. someone someone that you guys haven't really had a chance to wrestle you know a lot with or even at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you know Chris Benoit is a name. I'm glad you brought up. I, I had a chance to wrestle him uh, you know a couple months ago, and uh, oh, he was tremendous. And it was really just you know the the time I spent with him was a, a great learning experience. I've got you know the, the utmost respect for you know Chris Benoit, also Eddie Guerrero. You know, as well, I would love to have a chance to to feel comfortable with those guys. Work, you know, work with them a few times and, and do something with Chris Benoit or Eddie Guerrero. And I'm sure eventually, you know, if, if we run our course as a tag team and, and we split, you know, maybe we'll get to do some of that stuff. Uh, I definitely think that's a possibility for you know uh, either Jeff or I. What's what's yeah. your thoughts? As, what's your, what's your thoughts as far as um you know being there? I guess. As the whole thing was, co you know, going down first with the, the Steve Austin phenomenon and then with the Rock phenomenon, and just being like there every night while this both of them, I guess, were well, Austin, I guess, was already there when you got there, and then the Rock thing building, I think, mean, because you know there have been very few instances in wrestling, you know, where where guys, you know, there have been very few guys in, in the history of wrestling ever to get to that level. Right. Uh, it's, it's just like you said, it's, it's phenomenal. <clears throat> just to see it night in and night out, and you know, it's great to be on shows with those guys as far as you know. The time that you're there, and uh, you know the time you're, you know they're making their living, uh, you know, and, and both those guys have been really cool. You know, I, I think our whole roster, uh, you know, we've got a really good roster now as far as that goes, and I just think it's done so much for the business as far as now that it's opened up that it's, you know, this entertainment, because you know before when, you know, it, there was so much uh, kayfabe going on in wrestling, you know, it was almost like you know people said, oh, you know, why are they trying to hide something? You know, we, you know, that sucks. I mean, just da 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 da. You know, and then when they come out and say, well, this is entertainment, and, you know, watch it for entertainment, people go, well, you know, this this is kind of entertaining. This is fun. You know, I, I like to just sit back and, you know, let myself go in for two hours and enjoy, you know, an episode of Raw. You know, and I think that's done so much for the business, and that's helped. I think that's also helped out with, you know, the, the following that we've, uh, that we've acquired, you know, especially going mainstream, and, you know, that's led to, you know, the Stone Cold and, you know, rock phenomenon as well. David, is Dave still there? Yeah. Um, okay. Dave, any, anything else, Dave? No, that's it. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, you brought something about. Uh, um, what do you think? I mean, like, because wrestling. You know, one thing that's changed between like these pay-per-views now, and basically, you know, even a, f a few years ago, is that um, there's like so much. I guess. Uh, Feedback. I mean, it's a different kind of feedback than before. I mean, you know, before if you had a good match and the crowd reacted loudly, that was your feedback. Now, I mean, it's like there's a feedback after the fact. And does that, I mean, does that inspire you? Because I mean, one thing that I notice on pay-per-views is uh, between now and as compared with the '80s is, you know, you have, you have you have good matches and you have bad matches, but you never or almost rarely have matches that have that lack effort. Whereas in the '80s, you know, you could see guys. You know, on, on the card, you know, and I think that the travel schedule was a lot tougher, and, and certainly in the WWF and, and in WCW. I mean, when those guys were working six, seven nights a week, um, that that you know, they, they were a lot of going through the motion type stuff. And now, you know, you really, you know, it's it's the crowds are harder because they've seen much so much. But at the same time, I mean, it's like you you got a lot more. I mean, I mean, are you inspired by the fact that you know that like if you do a good match? Uh, people kind of recognize a good match, whereas before maybe like the boys would know it's a good match, but to the fans, sometimes they wouldn't even know a good match from a bad match, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think you point out to just the, the crowd being respectful. Um, y yeah, absolutely, it's an inspiration. It's really inspiring, just like when we went out and you know did. I'll use the ladder match for an example. You know, after uh, you know Jeff had grabbed the money bag down and and we had left, whenever Edge and Christian stood up in the ring, you know everybody in that building stood up and clapped and. You know, just because we won, they, you know, they forgot that fact already. They, what they were remembering is that four guys went out there and really busted their asses. You know, and they you know what's, funny, what, what's funny about that match is, is that, and, and compared with uh, the Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon match, I think that like everyone remembers that match, but who won and lost, like your match with Edge and Christian, I don't think that. I mean, it's like people, you know, people remember. I guess who won, but at the same time, it's it's hardly the main focus of the story. I just think we had a great match. I agree. That, that, that's changed a lot. I mean, <clears throat> nowadays, I mean, I'll, somebody, you know, well, someone I'll use for an example, if the Dudleys go out there, they can lose a match. But at the end of the match, if they put somebody through a table, that's what people remember. They don't even remember them, you know, losing the match. They remember putting them through a table. And it's, well, it's, it's, it's almost been the way that people have, 
you know, been programmed to watch. And, you know, I think, it, once again, it's kind of attributed to the fact that it's entertainment. And, and they, they, they realize everybody is, is human beings, and if you can go out there and, and put on a good effort, and, you know, you leave them with a statement, they'll respect that man. Do you ever do you ever get frustrated, uh, on the other hand, where uh, maybe you're out there, and, I mean, you're really working hard, and for whatever reason, maybe it's the wrong opponent or something like that, and and the match is good, and you know it's good, but maybe it's a cold match, and, and you know, it's a TV taping, and they're waiting for the rock, and they're just sitting on their hands, yeah. or, or, does it, or does it not really bother you at all? Uh, it, it does, yeah, sure it does. I mean, uh... <clears throat> to, to get a complete feeling for a match, I mean, besides just going out in the match being good, you have to have a crowd there. That that really makes the match as well. And you know, it, it is frustrating to a degree, and it's just one of those things you have to you have to accept. It's just going to be there occasionally. Do we have a trivia right. winner yet, by the way? Al, do we have any trivia winners? Oh, we got we got them. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what questions we're, we'd we'd have to go to next. <laughs> hey Matt, if they split you up into. Uh you know, singles wrestlers and that sort of thing, and they actually made an effort to step up the cruiserweight division in the WWF. Would you rather work in a division like that where there'd probably be more high flyers or have a go at the heavyweights? Um, I wouldn't be opposed to working in the cruiserweight division at all. Uh, but yeah, I would probably like to be, you know, mixed in with everybody, you know, more first first and foremost. You know, and I don't think being labeled as a, as a cruiserweight is, you know, a bad thing at all. I just think there's a lot more... You know, there's there's a lot more potential if if you're just kind of mixing there with everyone, more than just being centered around a, a cruiserweight, you know, cruiserweight type status. You know, which, like I'm saying, I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, and nothing I would be opposed against. But you know, I would I would uh, you know, further I, I would rather be in the, the the mix with everyone. Okay, we are getting a list to see Ziggy Chris of California, and. Rick Royster of Tennessee correctly guessed that the first WWF European champion was Davy Boy Smith. And uh, anyway, uh, we uh, tomorrow on this show we are going to have Bruce Mitchell of Pro Wrestling Torch. And I wonder if we can keep this demographic for one more day. Think so? No, I neither. Anyway, uh, let's go to Melanie in West Virginia. Mel Melanie, you're up with Matt Hardy. Hi, um, Matt. I have a question for you. Actually, you're going to get to settle a question that a friend of mine and I have. We were talking about this the other night, and basically what we would like to know, when you're doing something like, say, the triangle ladder match from WrestleMania, what goes through the process of putting a match like that together from, from the start to the finish and deciding, you know, where the spots are going to happen? Um, uh, well, in actuality, <coughs> uh, we, we kind of, uh, that match was, uh, we, we had a lot of ideas for things that we, we, we wanted to do in that match. But uh, actually, we we all got together just the night before WrestleMania and kind of sat down and, and mapped out uh, a blueprint of what we wanted to do. Um, it, it was just kind of uh, you know a, a combination of all three teams sitting around and you know just throwing stuff out and then we you know kind of start piecing stuff together and you know we said well this is you know a really huge spot and it's hard to fit it here and hard there but it would fit better here. It, it, it's, it's complicated doing stuff like that too because. It's, it's hard to, to to get as much chaos and destruction as we want to get out of that match, and try and make it make you know sense to a degree. It's you know it's nearly impossible to, but you know it's just uh, just kind of sitting down with all your ideas and, and just everybody getting together and trying to come into some sort of agreement on on where things fit the best. I mean, there's there's no real you know secret plan to it. <laughs> it's uh, it's just uh, you know. Uh, just, just taking, you know, just taking your ideas, whatever ideas you have, you know, about particular spots, whether it be, you know, with a, a ladder or a table or a combination of whatever, and, you know, trying to slowly make them progress and to the climax there. You know, no, no real secret behind it, I guess. Uh, I would like to add too for everyone who uh, enjoyed that match, we're going to have a, a TLC tables, ladders, and chairs, a video featuring uh, the Hardys, the Dudleys, and Christian Edge coming out August 22nd. I think it's also going to have the uh, the original ladder match and the table match and also a lot of uh, behind-the-scenes interview and also a little behind-the-scenes footage of myself and Jeff and maybe Christian Edge as well. It's going to be a, a videotape the uh, WWF's releasing on August 22nd. It should be really good. That's really good. Yeah. It's good to see, like, uh, more guys getting, uh, you know, that type of, uh, you know, packaging and everything. Yeah, because, uh, like you said, too, 10 years ago, guys like us, you know, middle guys never, never got anything like that. Yeah. Uh, let's go to a genie in Illinois. Genie, what's going on? 
Just want to say, first of all, that I got to meet um, you and your brother in Houston, Texas at the end of March. And I want to say thanks for being so cool. But I just wondered if you ever get jealous of Jeff, because everybody seems to talk about him a lot more than you. No, no, not really. Not at all. Uh, you know, that, that's why, you, I mean, people are always going to have that, uh, you know, people are always going to have their own opinions, and somebody with as much athletic ability as Jeff, as Jeff and, I'll, you know, I will be the first to admit, Jeff athletically is amazing. I mean, he's definitely right along the lines of Shawn Michaels as far as athleticism goes. I mean, anything Jeff wants to do, he can do in a ring. And, you know, it's awesome. He's just he's smooth and he's graceful and everything he's got. You know, but as far as me me being jealous of him, that's, you know, not the case at all. I mean, there's there's so many other things. If you could see, you know, how if everyone could, you know, be with us like day to day and see how much we kind of need each other as, as a team, it would really change a lot of people's perspectives. But, you know, as far as, uh, you know, if we ever split one day, I'm sure we'll have something good there for a built-in angle. So, you know, no, I, I don't at all. I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of Jeff. Jeff's great, and I'm really happy, and I couldn't have a better tag team partner. And, you know, as long as people are, are, are talking, uh, you know, talking about Jeff, you know, you know, God bless them. I hope they continue. Anything else, Jeannie? No, nope, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Jeannie. You know, Matt, is there, is there, are there, you know, you know, you've worked a lot with the Dudleys and, and all the tag teams, actually, you know, through through the WWF. You know, when we brought up Benoit and everything, are there, are there people who you're sitting there going like, you know, God, I wish I could get to work with, um, that, you know, I mean, even whether it be The Rock or, you know, any any guys that you, you know, kind of like if you could break away from your, the normal teams you're going against and have a program with two guys that maybe aren't a tag team that are usually wrestling singles, is there any ones that might pop into your head? Right. Um, let me oh, let me think of guys that are, you know, easy combination of guys. You know, uh, you know like, uh, you know, like you said, Jericho and Benoit, uh, Guerrero, uh, you know, Hunter, I, I'm actually... I'm not not even in the mode of thinking of like two guys, just thinking of guys individually, like in any combination. You know, Hunter. You know, Hunter's just been an awesome hill, and like you, said, you know, he's been in the MVP of the WWF as far as that goes. He's been tremendous. Uh, you know, the, the Rock, obviously, just because you know anybody wants to get in there with you know the, the number one guy. You know, it'd, it'd be nice to do something with Steve Austin. Um, but uh, you know, from from talent aspect, uh, from from a talent aspect, I mean. You know, Chris Benoit, I could definitely, you know, learn a lot with somebody like him. Uh, a Guerrero, uh, you know, Malenko, you know, Hunter, as far as that goes. You know, Jeff and I, we're still, you know, we would definitely admit, you know, we're still learning a lot as time goes on. Uh, there's, there's still, there's still several guys, you know, those are some of the first names that popped in my head that I would love to get in the ring with. Let's go to Tim in Florida. Tim, you're up with uh, Matt Hardy. Yeah, how you guys doing tonight? Um, uh, yeah, Matt, I got a, uh, Two or three questions for you. First, it, um, you, uh, you and Jeff's match against Two Cole at the SmackDown tapings on Fourth of July was a great match. Thank you. Uh, but anyway, um, out of um, all the matches that you've um, had, which a lot of people say you guys usually do have the best match of the night, but when uh, matches do come to mind that I've seen of you guys uh, is, of course, the WrestleMania match with uh, Edge and Christian the Dudleys, but. Out of the matches that you've had, Matt, what would you say is the best one? Does that rank up there? Where does that one rank up there? Is that what you asked? Yeah. Um, it, it's up there. It's, I, I would still my, my first and foremost match would be the first ladder match. Um, and that, there was just, I think another reason uh, we, uh, there was so much, you know, hype after that match, and there was so much build up because at that time nobody really expected to do that. I don't think. And whenever we went out at, at WrestleMania, you know, there was a little bit more expectation for us to have uh, a, a great match. And, you know, I think the WrestleMania match was really good. I'm really happy with it. I always will be. You know, it just didn't, it, there wasn't as much hype and hoopla that followed after that match, which maybe, you know, in my own personal opinion, devalued a little bit. You know, but I, I think that the, the match was, was really great. And considering the WrestleMania crowd was real, the, the whole night they were, were you know, they, they weren't really in the thing. You know, real heavenly. That was kind of a uh, a, a very. Uh, it was a hard crowd at WrestleMania, and they were they were in our match. So I was happy about that. Uh, the table match that we had at the Royal Rumble. That's one of my favorite matches too. Going back, uh, uh, there, there's actually there's several. I probably have to put down think of that, that really stand out. I know those dudes just because they were real original at the time. Like the first, you know, the tag team ladder match and the tag team table match. You know, those were just 
original first round matches that nobody's really done to that point in time. What are your thoughts as far as like looking back in time of some of the matches you did in Omega that you know, except for people who have you know videos and stuff that people you know generally speaking have never seen and how they would rank up with your matches in the WWF now? I mean, where have you improved and where where would maybe those matches because you you know in the main event you had a lot more time to do matches where would they excel? Sure, um, well, actually some of them are some of them are real high. I mean Jeff uh, Jeff is world of West. We used to <clears throat> we had such an ongoing feud you know as a you know, Surge and, uh, you know, Matt Hardy, Surge and Jeff Hardy, Will Lewis. And we had some, some really ma some matches that I'll go back and look at and I'll, you know, see spots here and I'll go, hey, I gotta break that back out or hey, we need to do this. And, and they actually, they, they rank up there in the, in the top ten, I'm sure. And you know, there's a lot that, that we've learned since then. And, you know, it's, it's almost hard to compare those matches to like, you know, TV matches because they're just completely different now. You know, you know, just like comparing a house show match to a TV match is just completely different. Just because of time constraints. I mean, there's not, you know, TV, it's just hard to take time and go out and, you know, uh, it, it set your pace and, and tell a story. You know, where you, you find, can do that when you have plenty of time. Do you find doing a lot of three man and four man tag teams uh, more difficult, or have you done them so many times that, that it's it's just another night now? Uh, they, they, they're a lot easier. I mean, they're, they're getting a lot easier. They're, they're, diff they're more difficult, though, just because you have to try and combine everybody. Um,. You know, uh, the, the three man really, in actuality, all parties involved, the Dudleys and, uh, you know, us and the Edge and Christian, were a little worried about how the three way match would come off for WrestleMania because we thought, you know, it might really end up clustered. Just because with having three teams in there and trying to keep somebody busy at all times. And, uh, we, we, we avoided that to a degree, you know, which you just got, it just adds, adds a lot more into the match that you kind of have to worry about. Let's go to Mike in New York. Right. Mike, you're. Dave? Yes. Oh, I just I just got one more. Uh, okay, go ahead. Sorry sir. about sir. that. Um, I I wanted to say, Matt. Um, I know you, that the tag team division, the WWF, is stronger than ever, which is great. But um, before that, and um, right now, um, what is what what has been your most memorable feud, and who would you like to feud with that you haven't already, tag teams or singles? Uh, in the WWF. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Wow, we've almost. Uh... I don't know. Uh, really, I think we've almost cheated with everybody. Yeah. To a degree. Um, you know, I mean, we, we haven't really, we haven't, ever since we, you know, we were with Michael Hayes, we had a million matches with uh, Too Cool, you know, back when they were too much, you know, it was the, the Hardy Boys, the Rocker Hardy Boys. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think we've almost, you know, really kind of worked a, a little deal with almost every tag team there is now. You know, there's, like I said, I, I think there's still a lot of legs with, you know, us and us and the Dudleys. Yeah, because we were we still almost had something, you know, going there after WrestleMania. It just kind of stopped. I think they'll, they'll, there's a lot left there somewhere. Dave, um, I couldn't hear him too well. Could you tell me what he said? No, he's talking about uh, he's still got this, he thinks there's a lot of life left with uh, them and the Dudleys. Oh uh, yeah, that, that, that's a great feud um, in itself. All right, well, yeah. thanks a lot very much, Matt. All right, okay. dude. Okay. Thanks a bunch, Tim. Let's go to uh, Mike in New York, Mike. Hey, good evening, guys. I got two questions. Um, first one is, um, after seeing all the brutal matches that Mick Foley has gone through and and the toll it's taken on him, are you worried with all the high spots that you guys do that your career is going to be shortened a bit? Uh, yeah, I think every wrestler is, is worried about, you know, what the future is going to hold for them. And, you know, the, the more you do as far as in terms of high spot, I guess that you know, makes you think about it even a little more. I mean, uh, first off, I'd like to thank. I mean, <clears throat> I you know I, I try and keep myself in you know in good shape and uh, you know possibly better shape than you know Mick Foley was for the stuff he was doing. Uh, and really, I've toned you know I've toned down my stuff to a degree from from when we first started. I mean, I I do stuff here and there. I try and kind of pick and choose. And Jeff, on the other hand, still uh, Jeff still is you know wide open and. I don't think really Jeff thinks about the future as far as you know him you know being uh, you know hurt or cutting his career short or whatever. But 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 I do think about that. You know I want to preserve my body as long as possible and you know try and put my hot spots in the appropriate places and pick and choose. Okay, anything else, Mike? Uh, yeah, I got actually I have a second question for Dave. Um, judging by your reputation and on your views and the star that you give per matches and match quality. Um, do you feel that uh, America's favorite food should be a taco or be flaming? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I actually don't understand that. 
<laughs> I think I know what you're saying. Hey, am I still there? Am I still around? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Any other callers, or should we hit some... Okay. Uh, who's anybody next, or... Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, so let me just go through a couple quick emails here. Um, actually, most of these are pretty... Actually, there's almost exactly similar. Um, this is from Dan from Surrey, British Columbia. And what's the megahertz moon salt? Uh, it, it was a uh, it's a springboard, you know, just a springboard moon salt in the ring. And what I used to do is my finish is a surge. Uh-huh. And Maybe uh, someone was asking, how come you don't do that move anymore? Just because the, the rope is, you know, in WWF are real rope and... There, it's kind of uh, it's almost being risky if you go out there midway through the night the ropes the, the ropes are loose or you know real slick or whatever I, I don't know it's hardly not even worth taking the chance now because the might uh, hurt the percentage of all the times I get it correct. You know Brian, you know Brian brings this up all the time um, about the rings and everything. Um, you know the ring. You know what stuff as far as the WWF ring itself. You know you brought up that. Um, what other stuff as far as in the ring? The, the type of ring does that uh, you know keep you from doing or 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 and what what moves do the WF ring kind of help you do better? And what kind of ropes did you have in Omega? Were they uh, the we, real rope we or cable? Cables. We we had cable ropes there, which I, I I wish we had those in WWF. I mean you know the WWF ropes are actually real ropes, and whenever they get loose and they just like you know make them shorter and tighten them back up and after you know there's six or seven matches if you go out there midway through Raw or SmackDown after there's been you know, heat and jack and dark match. I mean, the ropes start, you know, start loosening up a lot and they're also slick. And I don't know, they're just not... Cable ropes are so much tighter and more stable, you know. Jeff and I used to both do a lot of springboards, and we, it's like, it's very rare if we do that now just because it's not worth taking the chance. And also, Dan asked Brian, uh, Brian, what do you think of Tony Kazina? Uh, just haven't seen him in a long time, but real good high flyer. I think uh, the only problem is he's just really small. Real small. So. And this is for uh, Matt here. Um, what do, what's, what's your thoughts as far as Trish Stratus goes? As far as like, uh, you know, for for the brief time she's really trained at wrestling, you know, she seems to have a lot of willingness to take bumps, you know, more than like a lot of the women. Yeah, she she does actually. When uh, I don't think it was necessarily Trish's fault when Trish first came into the WWF, she didn't understand how really the, the wrestling business worked at all. And it was kind of a, a rude awakening with her to a degree. But uh, her attitude's really, you know, got a lot better, and she started understanding, you know, the way the wrestling business works, I think. And she's, she's really willing to do whatever. And, you know, obviously we've, we've worked with, with Trish quite, quite a bit now. And, you know, I've worked with Trish. And just like, uh, you know, uh, the, the stuff we've done the last few weeks, Trish has been uh, really open-minded. She's been uh, willing to learn. And, you know, anything we've really asked, uh, you know, her to do, she's been willing to do it. So, uh I have to give her the uh, thumbs up on that. You know, she can continue to stay. She can continue to stay open-minded. I think she can uh, go a long way. Because, like you said, you know, she's willing. She's willing to take a bump, and you know, she's willing to uh, to do stuff with the body. And you know, that's what it takes. I mean, you have to, if you're a woman or any figure in wrestling now, you have to you have to bump to be successful. Or be very very lucky and be in the right place at the right time. I mean, uh, you know, say you know, it's like there's always there's always that. There's always that rule, and then you always have people in wrestling, whether it be Jim Helwig or Sable, who, for whatever reason, they made they made a huge a huge amount of money just by being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, I, I agree. I just I don't think I don't think that can be done now, though. Um, you mean you know? I mean, like, like when I look at Rock and Steve Austin with all their charisma, the fact is, is that those guys those guys didn't get by with half ass matches. Yeah, you know, right. Whereas, so, but but in, in, you know, there were guys. That, that, you know, it is it is. It is harder, I think, because everyone judges things, and people kind of. I think that the, the fan recognition of, of a bad match is a lot bigger, in that like, sure. uh, you know, like getting through that like Hulk Hogan type of thing. It, you know, I think we've seen, you know, as big as his name is, it doesn't cut it anymore. Right. Anyway, Matt, I want to thank you very much for doing the show and changing our demographic profile 180 degrees today, huh. which was really cool. Well, thank you. And, and uh, best of luck uh, in, in everything in your SummerSlam match back in uh, Raleigh. And uh, we'll be seeing you every Monday and Thursday. Very good. Yeah, it's really exciting. Like I said, uh, we're looking forward to SummerSlam. It should be good. And, you know, uh, hopefully Matt and Jeff Hardy can uh, do something special at SummerSlam. But uh, thanks for having me, Dave. Okay, you're very welcome. All right, man. And see you guys.